Close on the heels of the Pfizer vaccine was AstraZeneca, also known as the Oxford vaccine, quickly gained favor in the UK, but likely won't make its way to the US. Curious about the AstraZeneca vaccine and its potential side effects? Here's what happens when you get it. The first thing most people want to know about vaccines is how they work. On the surface, it seems odd that we can take part of a deadly virus, break it up, put it into a shot, and wind up protected from that same disease. But when you look at the mechanics of how a vaccine is created and how our bodies respond to it, the process makes a lot more sense. By now, most people have seen the general shape of a coronavirus. It looks sort of like an orange pomander, the aromatic holiday decoration made by pushing whole cloves into an orange. And it is this shape that gives them their name. As Healthline explains, COVID-19 viruses have crown-like protrusions on their surface. Corona is Latin for crown, so coronavirus translates roughly to crown virus. But there is nothing regal about those crowns, known as protein spikes, and they are the bit of the virus that digs into our cells and allows for infection. As the BBC explains, however, they are also the key to making the AstraZeneca vaccine. Researchers cut the protein spikes off a coronavirus and then added those spikes to a harmless virus. This harmless secondary virus acts as a carrier, sort of like a carrier oil allows for the use of essential oils that would otherwise agitate a person's skin. The harmless virus gets the spike proteins into our bodies without causing a real COVID-19 infection. When someone receives their vaccine, they are injected with this harmless carrier virus as well as the protein spikes. This forces the body to react. This means that our immune system activates, creating antibodies and T cells to fight the protein spikes as they try to latch onto our cells. And since the protein spikes are not attached to the large body of a coronavirus, our bodies have an easier time fighting them. This fight is also why many people develop mild symptoms after receiving their vaccine. The Mayo Clinic explains that many vaccine side effects feel similar to colds and flus because in all three cases, the immune system is the culprit, not the vaccine or the disease. When you receive a vaccine or catch a cold, the discomfort you generally feel isn't the disease attacking you, it's your body fighting back. The clinic also explains that this is why sometimes a second dose can make you feel worse than the first dose. Dr. Melanie Swift is the co-chair of the Mayo Clinic's COVID-19 Vaccine Allocation and Distribution Work Group, and she says that the first vaccine dose is akin to helping your body study for the test. It encounters the spike proteins and learns how to best fight them. When you receive your second dose, your body treats it like the big test, and it's going for an A. It's primed for a fight, so the reactions are more severe. Of course, side effects and their severity seem to vary from person to person, and for the same reasons that some people can shrug off a cold while others can barely get out of bed to find a fresh box of tissues. Each body has its own way of dealing with infection. When people do experience side effects, however, they tend to follow a certain pattern. When it came to the AstraZeneca vaccine, the government of Queensland, Australia wanted to be prepared. They released an informative document listing the common side effects of the vaccine, as well as slightly less common side effects and a general timetable explaining how long the symptoms should last. According to the document, the AstraZeneca vaccine could cause headaches, chills, fever, tiredness, nausea, and joint or muscle pain. The injection site could also be red, swollen, hot, or itchy. Slightly less common side effects include a diminished appetite, swollen lymph nodes, limb pain, dizziness, and stomach pain or GI distress. In all cases, the symptoms should clear up in a matter of days. It is only when the symptoms linger beyond that time frame that the Australian government urges people to seek additional medical care. The good news is that these symptoms are on par with the other major vaccines, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, but that doesn't address the larger concern over blood clots. One of the most important things to know about reports of AstraZeneca blood clots is that even in the groups at higher risk for them, they're rare. The BBC states that people over 40 have a 1 in 100,000 chance of developing blood clots from the vaccine. That risk increases to 1 in only 60,000 for people in their 30s and under, which still makes them unlikely but is a much higher risk level than the risk to older people. Bottom line? The World Health Organization says there's no reason to stop the use of the Oxford AstraZeneca coronavirus vaccine. Cosmos, the space and technology magazine, puts the numbers another way. As of April 2021, there had been 168 cases of blood clots out of 21.2 million administered doses of AstraZeneca. This works out to roughly 8 cases per every 1 million doses. 
These numbers are related to a specific type of clot, however. The clots that temporarily halted AstraZeneca production are known as cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, or CVST. These are stationary clots that form in the large veins of the head. Johns Hopkins Medicine explains that when this happens, it prevents blood from draining out of the brain properly. When the buildup becomes too great, the blood leaks into the brain tissue and can cause a stroke or death. For comparison, the same kind of clots happen to five out of every million people per year without the vaccine's interference, so the vaccine does cause an increase, but not a large one. AstraZeneca is currently in use throughout most of Europe, but some countries have restrictions placed on who can receive the vaccine. These restrictions generally limit it to those over the age of 40, though some countries have even increased that age to 55 or even 60. In all cases, the goal is to make sure there are enough vaccines for everyone and to get as many people vaccinated as possible. CNN reports that globally, we are almost administering 35 million doses of vaccines per day. Gibraltar currently leads the world in vaccine distribution with roughly 2.3 doses administered for 100 people, accounting for the two doses needed for most vaccines to be fully effective. But we still have a long way to go. In the U.S., the CDC offers a forecast on their predictions for the number of nationwide COVID deaths based on vaccination numbers and other precautionary measures. Their lowest forecast still predicts more than 2,000 COVID deaths in the last week of July 2021. That's a much more hopeful number than the 20,000 confirmed deaths recorded in late January of 2021, but it is still a number that can be reduced with continued care and vaccination. As for the AstraZeneca vaccine ever being used in the United States, Dr. Anthony Fauci told CNN in April 2021 that there's no need for it considering the other safe and effective vaccines available. Fauci told the network, We already have contracted for enough vaccines from Moderna and from Pfizer and from Johnson & Johnson. It's not any indictment against the product, we just have a lot of vaccines. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Health Digest videos about the latest vaccine developments are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.